Okay, here's the uh, the setup. This is this is a calibration of this meter. Uh, right now, I have it on the 200 millivolt setting, and it's reading 7.4 millivolts, and that's the voltage drop across the one ohm current viewing resistor that you can see down in there. So that translates to 7.3 milliamps current. And I also have the oscilloscope probe hooked across that same resistor there. Uh, and you can see that the lights are glowing pretty bright. Right. And uh, here's this corresponding oscilloscope trace. Okay. So um, this is the current in the current viewing resistor. And we're looking at that at it's such a small current that I had to use the 1x setting on the probe. So that's 5 millivolts per division. Okay, and uh, there's the zero baseline. So 5 millivolts per division. So we have 5, 10, 15 millivolt peaks. And if you take that, cut it off right there and flip it over in there, the average of this nice triangular ramp signal is just a bit over seven and a half millivolts. Right? So we're in very good agreement here. The average current from the oscilloscope agrees with the average current reading on the multimeter at the same point in the circuit. So I believe that 7.3 millivolts is fairly accurate. Uh, based on my confirmation with the, uh, the oscilloscope here, okay. Okay, now let's look at some waveforms. This is in the standard Jewel Thief mode with the uh, capacitor out of the circuit. Now I've added the second oscilloscope probe to look uh, across the load, so that's the output. That's same common ground point and the uh, uh, collector of the uh, uh, of the transistor, right? And we're drawing about 11 milliamps. LEDs are nice and bright. And here's what the scope trace looks like. This is the current again, uh, and we're looking at that at 10 millivolts per division now. And again, if you chop off that peak and stuff it into the trough, you see we have almost exactly 10 millivolts uh, average current on there. And uh, this is the, oh yeah, I'm sorry, that's where the baseline is. And then this is the uh, output pulse to the LED, and that's where its baseline is. And we're looking at that at uh, 2 volts per division, so we have 2, 4, 6 volts there, which is about what you'd expect because we have uh, two series white LEDs in there, so you have to overcome all of that forward voltage to get your to spike cutoff there. All right, so that's in the standard. Oh, and the time base is at uh, 50 microseconds per division there. Okay, so now uh, we'll go to the capacitor mode, and I'm just, I'm going to switch that, but I'm going to have, have you look at the screen. Oh yeah, capacitor mode, lights go dim. Uh, and then I'll adjust the loop stick. Okay, so uh, normal Jewel Thief mode, capacitor mode, and then let me switch the frequency. All right, so now we're at five microseconds per division. And you can see that there's a change in the wave shape. We have more of a half sinusoid now, and then the current is so small I can't resolve it on the scope. All right. Now, as I, oh, and the LEDs are starting to, starting to come on dimly, and the current's going up a little bit, 500 microamps now. All right, so now when I slide the loop stick inductor around to get those lights to glow brightly, there, or I get it into the mode where it increases in brightness while I'm watching, and then spontaneously flicks into the higher brightness mode. 
that's a very tricky little adjustment there. But I'll let you see what the scope trace does. So as I slide the inductor in further, the frequency changes and the mode of action shifts from that to that, which is a lot more like the standard Jewel Thief, but with a lot more jitter. Right? So again, if I switch the capacitor out, I get a stable kind of standard Jewel Thief waveform. Capacitor in, I get this high frequency oscillation, and then if I adjust the inductance, it snaps into this lower current mode but with a waveform that looks a lot like the standard Jewel Thief. Okay, So what I'm doing is just sliding this inductor in and out just a little bit and with the standard Jewel Thief setting moving the inductor doesn't cause much change in the brightness of the light but it causes a big change in the waveform. Notice how the frequency gets lower and lower and lower with more inductance, but the duty cycle changes in proportion. So I think that's why you don't see much change in the actual overall light output. Okay, But in the capacitor mode, I get this very radical dependence on the position of that inductor where it shifts modes like that and that's a much higher frequency oscillation and it's also harder to get the scope to trigger on it If I can get that just right, it'll do that spontaneous increase. There it goes. All right, and you can see even with the with lights going pretty bright, I still have seven and a half milliamps of current, and we trust that as the average current input. It's going down because the battery voltage is dropping a little bit. That this battery is quite dead. All right, thanks for watching.